Hi guys, Mr. John here. This video is going to be all about how to draw Lewis structures for compounds that don't follow the octet rule, exceptions to the octet rule. We're going to start off with um, a couple elements that can have less than an octet. So boron and beryllium can actually be stable with less than eight valence electrons. This example here shows boron trifluoride, which has uh, six valence electrons. And beryllium can often get away with only having four. So those are common exceptions to elements that can have less than an octet. And then there's a much larger group of elements that can have uh, an expanded valence shell. They can have more than an octet. And they do this by using empty d orbitals to form additional bonds. A traditional octet is a full S and P sublevels, and so by utilizing d orbitals you can actually have more than an octet. But you can only do that for elements that are in period 3 or higher, and the reason for that is because periods 1 and 2 utilize the uh, first and second principal energy levels and for those principal energy levels, there are no D sublevels. It's not until you get to the third principal energy level where you get the 3D. And so, if we look at the periodic table, what this really means is that there's only a very small number of elements that actually really have to follow the octet rule. So we're only talking about nonmetals, and so that's what's shown in yellow here because they're the ones that can covalently bond. And so, Group 1 has hydrogen, group 2 has carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. These are the only nonmetals that have to really strictly follow the octet rule when they are covalently bonding. The other nonmetals can use their empty d orbitals to expand their valence shell. And so these nonmetals here, the ones that are in periods 3, 4, and 5, they don't have to have 8 valence electrons. They can have 8, 10, or even 12. And I included xenon in there because in a laboratory, scientists have been able to actually bond xenon to fluorine in a bunch of different ways. So the first example of a Lewis structure that breaks the octet rule is going to be beryllium chloride. Now beryllium chloride looks like an ionic compound but it actually does form covalent bonds. It's important to remember that not all elements are strictly ionic or strictly covalent. There are some that are kind of in between, and this is where the electronegativity difference between the two elements is not super huge. So let's uh, draw this structure. Beryllium is going to have two valence electrons. The two chlorines each have seven, and that's going to give us a total of 16 valence electrons that we have to account for. We'll put beryllium in the middle. We'll bond it to chlorine on either side with a single bond. Fill in the octets of our outside atoms. And so we have the right number of electrons now. We have 16. And the temptation is to move some of those uh, lone pairs on the chlorines to make double bonds to beryllium to give it its octet but beryllium doesn't actually need an octet. It's happy with two bonds, and so we are actually done with this molecule. We can stop here. Okay, next up is uh, sulfur tetrafluoride. So let's count up the valence electrons. Sulfur has six. We've got four fluorines with seven each, and that's gonna give us a total of 34 valence electrons that we have to deal with. So let's put sulfur in the middle. We're going to single bond all of the fluorines. Give each fluorine its octet. And now count up the valence electrons. Each fluorine's got 8 times 4, that gives us 32 electrons. So we still have two electrons that we need to add to the molecule, and the rule is we add those to the central atom. But when we do that, that gives sulfur 10 valence electrons. And that's okay. Sulfur is allowed to have 10 valence electrons, 
because sulfur is in group three. So it's using its empty d orbitals to expand its valence shell. And we just stop there. The last example is ICL4 minus. This is a polyatomic ion. So let's add up the valence electrons. Iodine has seven plus four chlorines, which also have seven each. And then we have to add an electron because the polyatomic ion has a negative charge. And that's going to give us a total of 36 valence electrons. We'll put iodine in the center, bond it to its four chlorines. Each chlorine gets an octet. But again, that only gives us 32 valence electrons. So we still have four more we need to add. We're going to add them onto the iodine in the center. We just kind of sneak them in there between the bonds. It doesn't really matter where you put them. And that gives iodine 12 valence electrons, but that's actually okay. It's allowed to have that many. And of course, this is a polyatomic ion, so we have to put big square brackets around the outside. And we put the charge of the ion on the outside up there.